So one of the issues uh, that comes up in cup wheel grinding uh, is how these cupped wheels wear away. So the way I break it down is, here we have a cup wheel, and I break it down into single doink grinding or double doink grinding. Single doink is where you go doink, zzz, doink, zzz, doink, zzz. Double doink is where you go doink, zzz, doink, zzz, doink, zzz, doink, zzz. So let's talk about single doink grinding. So let's say we have our wheel, our abrasive area on our cup wheel, let's say something like that, and we are going to go grind the workpiece. Now when we grind, we take a certain depth of cut. DOC for depth of cut. Now after we true the wheel, if we've trued him up, he is going to start grinding on the edge of the wheel and beating the hell out of that side of that edge of the wheel. That wheel is not going to survive very long on that edge, but at the beginning, that's what's going to happen. And then the wheel is going to start to develop this sort of taper. And it's going to go from there to there to there, and then maybe to there. And then it'll hit some sort of steady state value. Quite often when you get to this point, your surface finish gets bad because you don't really have much finishing width. So what I encourage my customers to do is to true a taper in the wheel. So let's take our rim and let's dress or true this taper in there. Now we're still going to grind like this in this direction. Here's my wheel, my cup wheel, and let's put that taper in there. Now what we're going to have is the flat width so we'll call that W flat. And that flat width is going to give us our good surface finish because he's flat. Then we're going to have our taper. And we'll call that W taper. And that's where all the grinding action is going to go on. Okay. So what happens is all the grinding action occurs here. That removes all the material. And then this flat gives us a nice good surface finish. And how do we figure out what taper to true into the wheel? Let's take alpha, the angle. This is my depth of cut right here, DOC. So tangent of alpha, if you remember your trigonometry, is my depth of cut divided by the W of the taper. We can do that in inches, we can do it in millimeters, as long as we're consistent with that. So let's say we've got a five millimeter rim. So let's this guy is five millimeters and we can break that up. Why don't we say this portion here is two millimeters and that portion there is three millimeters. And let's say we've got a depth of cut of 0 0.5 millimeters. Kind of a big cut, but we'll just go with that. So now my tangent of alpha is my depth of cut 0 0.5 millimeters divided by the width of the taper region 3 millimeters and 0 0.5 divided by 3 is 0 0.166667 now we want to figure out what alpha is so alpha is going to be the arc tangent of our 0 0.166667 and if we plug that in our calculator with degrees and not radians we'll get alpha equals 9.5 degrees so now we've got this guy is 9.5 degrees we true that in there and we don't have to suffer through that break-in period and the key here now is we want to make sure that that depth of cut is consistent Joe the operator grinds at 0 0.5 millimeters. If Frank comes over and decides to grind 0 0.25 millimeters, then he's going to be only grinding on that little portion right there. That's no good. If Jose the grinder comes over and he takes a one millimeter cut, he's going to start beating on the side over there. So we want to try to stay consistent on that guy uh, so we have the right 
uh, depth to give us that angle that we want. So I started doing this a couple years ago with my customers, um, and they like it. They true up that angle um, on their truing machine. They're off and running. Now, eventually, that guy will break in, um, but they'll be able to grind with more reasonable parameters uh, and not this ever-changing taper on their cup wheel, which causes all types of problems in terms of uneven wheel wear, uneven temperatures.